Hello and welcome to my channel. If you are new, I am so over the moon that you found me. And if you've been here before, oh my gosh, you came back. <laughs> my name is Alonda Carter and I am the Recovering Hunbot. And I want to say thank you. You guys are so awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for wishing my husband happy birthday yesterday. He got a total kick out of that and so did I. So today I thought what I would do is, um, well, you know, I get interested in things and you know, if you've been watching, you know, when I started investigating some different MLMs this week, I started kind of like cross-referencing things over in LinkedIn. And so I got a wild hair and started doing that with Little Row. So today we are Little Row focused and um, we're going to talk about their patterns and how they come up with them. and. That kind of stuff, which, you know, I, I think is really interesting and a bit horrifying, too. So if that sounds good to you, come on with me and let's do it. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to see, is Mark and Deanne, are they available? Can I find them on LinkedIn? Mark was there, and he has one experience. That's it. Just the LuLaRoe thing, which is weird. Skills and endorsements, just with LuLaRoe. And I was like, wow. That's odd. But then what really cracked me up is when I saw this. <laughs> oh my gosh, you too can get a job at LuLaRoe. And the one that really, really drew me in was the pattern and textile designer. Because my thought is I bet that position has got to churn and burn. Now I am leaving links to two different articles in my description that gives you an in-depth look at um, you know, this pattern creationing type thing that they do. Anywho, one is from an article in um, 2018, January 2018, talking about 2017. Another one is to uh, somewhere on um, r slash anti MLM or maybe r slash Lula. No, I, I don't remember, but just, you'll have your link to it, okay? That's what I'm saying. You'll have your link to it. Um, but anyway, the thing is, is that these people who create these patterns, it's not like they're given the freedom to take their time to create it. And either the Foxhole or Illuminati, I think one of them talked about this whole mess with what, you know, the, the textile designers are doing. And I cannot remember which one, but it doesn't matter, you know, because they're both fabulous. Anyway, and if you don't, if you don't watch their videos or you haven't subscribed to them, then you should totally should. You should totally do that. So anyhow, um, what I found really interesting is when I looked at these articles is that, and it was something that I knew from one of the videos that I saw, that the time people have to create the patterns is relatively none because there's such a high demand to be able to churn out a high degree of patterns each day. Now myself, if you don't know, I do have a degree in fashion illustration. That's my first degree. And as an artist in doing that, I mean, and I am not like a graphic designer or, or anything like that. And yeah, I was kind of able to um, transfer that skill when I have designed e-learning and stuff because, you know, you have to have like an artistic eye. Um, am I the best at, you know, that visual stuff? No, but, you know, I, I don't totally suck either. So I'm somewhere in between, you know, not sucking and being fabulous. I'm <laughs> somewhere in between. But my point is is when I sit down to design an online course, and I have to even come up like if I'm going to do a menu or if I want to get the look and feel, it, it takes me a minute. And then to figure out what I'm going to do with the screens, you know, it just, I, if I had the pressure to have a different screen created every five, 10 minutes, I mean, I, I would have been just drinking tequila all day because there's just no way. There is just no way that, you're going to be able to, um, you know, just produce quality. You just, you just can't. You just, you just can't. So this guy's picture. This is a, going to be a link to one of the articles. But artists were instructed to find artwork online and make minor alterations. This is art theft. Check that out. Is that no wonder some of these things are so hideous. No wonder if we've looked at things and been like, well, that looks like wallpaper. You know, artists may have gone and found, you know, wallpaper and been like, oh, okay, I'm just going to do this. I mean, I would not put it past them. Okay, so next, I, I, before we get into some of the pattern stuff, I found some other things that I'm like, you know what, this is just oddly fascinating to me. So let me share it with you. 
Okay, I found this Who's Who, because you know, all the Little Rose stuff, it has like these weird names, because it's all like people's names. So now we get to know who everyone is. The Amelia, the Cassie, the Anna, the Jill, the Jordan, the all, you know, isn't that just a, just a little odd, but you know, to each his own. So I, I found that interesting. And then I found something on the pricing. And you know, the thought of paying full price to any kind of Lula Road to me is, is, is mind boggling. And I get the fact that, you know, I don't have a problem paying like a good amount of money for something that I feel is quality. But for their stuff, I just, I, 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 I think not. Now I am really thinking of going to some nearby, I'm like, uh, um, going to the Bluebird or going somewhere and seeing if I can find some Lularo fashions for myself. And I, I would totally take pictures of what I find and share them with you guys because I'm just curious, is there something out there that's near me that I can check this stuff out with? And I'm a little bit afraid not only to get it, because I'll totally wear it like walking the dog, because I really just don't care what people think. But I'm going, oh my gosh, because I know like there's been problems with, you know, it falling apart. So if I wash it, do I have to wash it some special way and then, you know, you know, whistle a tune so that doesn't happen? I don't know. But, you know, I, I, I might check it out. My husband um, went to Corpus to go see his mom and his sister is coming into town to Corpus. I think she arrived there yesterday. So I may do that this weekend. I may go somewhere just for, you know, my own personal amusement. I will let you know. Okay, pricing. Huh? I kind of got on that tangent. You know, that happens. All right, here we go. So here's all the pricing, I guess, you know, um, of what they're saying to price your clothes. I got this somewhere, I think, on Pinterest. Where from, it doesn't matter. I mean, I didn't save those links, sorry, but I didn't really think it was worth it because you guys are smart and you can probably go look this stuff up. But I just found it interesting to be able to look at what these prices. I mean, the kids stuff is the cheapest, but would you want your kids to wear it? I mean, I certainly wouldn't want my children to wear this. I wouldn't say that to my stepsons. Hey, you know, <laughs> sport some of this, guys. I, I think they would just think I was even nuttier than they already think I am. <laughs> and then I found this sizing and fit guide. Okay. LuLaRoe is generally oversized. No kidding. And so here it gives you all of this. The fit of the Anna Nicole, and Nicole are identical. Wow. The fit of Anna Nicole Amelia is in the chest and the stretch of the material. Wow. So, I mean, look at this. So XXS is zero, zero to zero. I mean, the, here we go. These are just all the sizes. It's oh. in the Irma, go down two sizes. Fits. In, okay. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Seriously, so whatever size you normally wear, but if you're buying this thing called the Irma, you need to go down two sizes. Isn't that weird? Don't you feel like, you know, if you wear a size, you wear a size, and that's what you wear, and you shouldn't have to adjust? Just me? Or is it you two? Okay, now we're going to get into some of this um, patterning. Um, this pa pattern, no, art theft, really, it's art theft. Okay, here's the first one. Now, on the right-hand side, beautiful beta fish. We have received confirmation that Little Row used this beautiful beta fish image without receiving permission from or compensating the artist. Please not continue to enrich this company. So there you go. Now, and I look at the pattern, what it is on the left-hand side, I really think the one on the right-hand side is more beautiful because I really like the black and white. But the fact that you're just going to blatantly rip something off I have a huge problem with that. I, you know, have artist friends. You may too. And, you know, artists work very hard to create their art. And for someone to just come along and just take it, but then you're getting pressure from the art director at Lula Road to just go find something and, you know, just modify it slightly if that, and, you know, that's just, just find something. And so basically I'm, I'm presuming these people who are supposed to be artists for the textile department, all they're doing is finding, you know, art online. And if they haven't already, you know, stolen that is basically, let's see, let's leverage this. So not a lot of thought is going into creating the patterns is what I'm thinking. I mean, how could it be? Look at the stuff we've seen for the love of God and all that is holy. Okay. All right. Here we go. Another confirmed unauthorized use. Oh my God. 
So we even have the artist's name, and here we have a little row piece with the tab. I have received confirmation from the original artist of this geometric raccoon design that LLR did not notify request permission from or compensate him for using his artwork stop stealing from independent artists. Boom. Isn't that just terrible? And you know, this little raccoon is really, really super cute. But because it's a little rogue, they're going to make anything absolutely look horrendous. Don't you think? Okay, now this, if you are a baseball fan, I mean, I, I, my husband is. I don't think he'd want me to wear a baseball dress like this. But look, from Shutterstock, are you kidding me? You're just going there and finding something and being like, yep, that'll do her. And slapping it on, you know, as like, that's the print. It's, that just seems so low. I mean, just when I didn't think it'd be possible for me to think any less of this company, I, I find ways because there's just so much out there to, to find. Oh, good gravy. Not going to lie, I'm a little sad. This isn't a Patrick the Genius original. I'm not sure who hashtag Patrick the Genius is. Is that the little poop emoji? I don't know. Maybe, is that it? I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I don't know these things. Anyway, so we have Getty Images. Getty Images, yeah, you can't just use their stuff and slap it on something. And on the left-hand side, is is it me or is that poop? And is that poop emoji Patrick? I don't know. You guys tell me. But doesn't that look like poop? I mean, I, okay, I, told, I said this to my husband. I was trying to explain this last night when we were having margaritas and getting caught up because, you know, we work like opposite hours and everything, so we don't have a lot of time together. Um, and I said, you know, as a little rogue textile artist, I guess, you know, if your dog takes a poop, you're going to be like, oh, what kind of pattern can I make out of that? And then here we have, you know, literally stuff that looks like poop. You know, he wasn't getting it. He's, he's not a fashion guy at all, you know. I mean, it, it, he's not. Thank goodness he has me to dress him to go to work and, and look fabulous because, you know, I want him to look good. Okay, and then there's this. Okay, according to Graphics Fairy, original Fox artwork was from a 1915 drawing book. Lularo borrowed this design concept from a concept poster that was posted online. Again, that's what these people have to do is probably just go and find something and be like, yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. And that's that's just horrible. And here we have a very cute little unicorn, but then they stick it all, you know, the exact pattern from Shutterstock and then color it in and call it a day, stick it on some leggings and hey, that is our design. You are stealing. This next thing is really interesting to me. Check it out. Their logo. You can't even come up with anything original there. Now, okay, I, I love font. My husband, that's something else my husband and I share in common is like our love for font. Kind of odd, I, I, I know. And if you ever watch the middle, um, oh crap, what is that kid's name? He was a little bit off. Um, now I can't think of it. Anyway, he had a thing about font and had like a font club or something. Anyway, um, we always got a kick out of that. But, well, they did add triangles. Um, I have received confirmation that this font is available for free for both personal and commercial use. I'll post a link in the comments for anyone wishing to use it themselves. Yes, Little Rose logo is derivative. Thankfully, it is not stolen. But, you know, again, here we are. It's like, you, you know, Think about logos that you know, like Nike, Coca-Cola, like big companies that come to mind. I don't think they went out and just found something and slapped something. You know what I mean? To me, this is much more haphazard than there is with thought, which follows the same line as all of their stylings. It's just slopping some stuff together because, honestly, they don't really care that much. It's not about making quality. It's giving this illusion to these stupid unicorn prints and this illusion that everybody's going to be making money. But then we all know that their stuff ends up in consignment shops and in resale shops and literally given away for nothing. Oh, these poor people that have bought into their scam. Now look at this cute little fox. Such a cute little fox again taken from Shutterstock. I mean, I, I have no words for 
doing this, you know, of just literally stealing patterns and calling them your own because you're putting them on something to sell to people. That is just as horrible. And then we have this cute little watermelon. Now, not that I want to wear a watermelon print shirt at all, but literally it was a vector clip art. I mean, not much thought goes into just stealing that. Just find something and steal it, guys. That's the, I mean, imagine the pressure it was to do all that. Now this, to me, um, and you guys may or may not know who Evil Knievel is. I live in Houston and Evil Knievel, oh, it was in the 70s, I believe, that he performed a stunt in the Astrodome, jumping over X number of cars. And this looks exactly like him down here on the bottom. And then up on the top left, this evil pie, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm not sure what that is, but obviously Lula Roe found that and, and then they just hijacked it as well because that's their thing. Let's just hijack what somebody else has already done because we want to churn out so many different patterns. We just don't care. We just need people finding stuff so we can slap it on, you know, our hideous clothes and have people buy our stuff. Because at the end of the day, when um, somebody comes on board with LuLaRoe and they drop at least five grand, LuLaRoe doesn't care what they're sending them. I mean, and they want them just to keep ordering more because after all, you've got to restock. It just, to me, shows such a lack of integrity and just a lack of care. Just a lack of care. And, it, you know, have I ever, you know, borrowed something? Yeah, because like creating e-learning for me, um, I'm trying to think, it was actually through the software that I used. There were things that you, you could go and get, and I would I would use those all the time. But also I'd come up like with some of my own stuff too. But I wasn't then selling it as clothing anywhere. I was making courses. It's similar but different. But, you know, don't pass off somebody else's hard work as your own. You know, especially, you know, if you're having these women buy thousands of dollars worth of stuff that they have to then resell. And most all of the patterns are atrocious. So I just wanted to share that with you guys today that, you know, they're patterning. Just when you thought that it couldn't get any worse, it does because there's just no conscience, you know? Okay, guys, that's going to do it for now. If you have any memes or stories, I would love for you guys to submit those to me at the recovering hunbot at gmail.com. That would be so super cool if you enjoy anti-MLM content. I hope you'll consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. It would be super cool if you did. And again, thank you for saying happy birthday to my husband. He really liked that. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your time. And remember, it's up to us. If we want there to be a change, then we need to get our stories out into the world. So, you know, I'm looking for people to interview you know, other recovering Huns, former Huns. And you can email me at therecoveringhunbot at gmail.com and let me know if you are, are interested in me interviewing you, sharing your story. And I would just record it, record your voice. If you don't mind recording your voice, um, well then I have, a, I have an online form I actually can send you and you can, you can fill that out too. Um, so yeah, there's that. <laughs> so if you do have a story, I encourage you to get your story out there. If, if you're not telling me and like me sharing it on my channel, you know, let people know. And if you know other people who have stories, encourage them to share as well, because we do have power in numbers. We do have power through our stories, but it's up to us to open our mouths. And I invite you to file a report with the FTC. Most people take no action and just go into that good night. That's just how it is. But, you know, if you want there to be change, you need to do something. And the MLMs are counting on people won't. That's why they get away with all this stuff. And remember, change starts now.